everyone, my name is Athena and I'm here with Scalar Performance. And I'm Will, I'm here with Stealth EV. So, I'm here with... Jimmy Underhill. So Jimmy, what do we have here? Tell us about your car. This is my 96 Land Cruiser. Uh, it's a EV conversion and I take it to Moab and go rock crawling here in Colorado mountains and just drive it all over the place. Well, and you're from Colorado? Yeah, nice. right, yep, right from here. Nice. And I guess my first question would be why electric? Like why EV? Um, I just have always been into like new technologies and the electric motors, the batteries. It's just kind of like cool to me. And I'm also a gearhead. I love cars and tinkering and tuning them. And um, like nowadays it's kind of hard to modify your gas car without a lot of issues with emissions regulations and stuff. So I decided to go and try an EV conversion to kind of get around that, but still t tinker and tweak with my car. Cool, and is this your only project or do you have other EV swaps as well? Uh, so this is my first project, but I do have um, some other projects in the pipeline. I got a 69 Land Cruiser that I'm gonna be doing next and um, possibly some sports cars. Cool, and why did you choose this car specifically to swap? Is there any specific reason? Yeah, I wanted the Land Cruiser because it's uh, excellent off-road. It's got the ground clearance, the four-wheel drive, and it's rugged and tough and uh, just a reliable platform so I can put my electric parts in it and I know that everything with the vehicle itself is going to be okay. Yeah, for sure. Did you have any challenges along the way? Like what would you say was your biggest challenge and how would you overcome it? Maybe some advice for people trying to do the same? Yeah, definitely challenges. Um, you're trying to fit things into a new vehicle that it wasn't designed to go into. Um, the biggest challenge was with like adapting the motor to the transfer case. And I ended up having to enlist some of my friends' help who were uh, machinists and was able to use their CAD software to design things on the computer so that we can just build one and then put it in the car and we know it's going to work. Cool. And what about maybe your proudest design feature, something that was really accomplishing for you? Maybe if you want to show us. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'd say just overall, it's built to go off-road, so it still has the low-range transfer case. So you can shift down into low and it'll climb anything. It'll go up and over. And I've taken out to Moab and I did Hell's Revenge, which is a famous trail there. And I did Hell's Gate, which is a really challenging obstacle. And I didn't have any issues, nothing broke. And I was able to do the whole thing, no problem. That is a big accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing some of your projects in the future. Definitely, thank you. Thanks. All right, so I'm here with Jacob Graham. Jacob Graham, who built this glorious AC DMC DeLorean <laughs> what what's your opinion on gas vehicles uh, I mean I think they I think uh, gas and electric vehicles have they both have their place and they absolutely should be coexisting um, you know I uh, my background has been traditionally in uh, my interests have always been in cars you know I still have my muscle car with my 427 Stroker in it and I have this but they both they just fill uh, they fill two different roles for me in my mental space right um, I enjoy this for what it is and you know as a daily driver I've kind of moved over to uh, you know electric vehicles but I thoroughly enjoy my you know my 427 powered you know classic car okay so so you don't think we should like ban gas no 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 I mean I think I my opinion would be more that let the market kind of decide where we're headed obviously this is going to require a little bit of coercion because people are tend to be more resistant to change what I would love to see is the EVs become much more prevalent in the market space um, but um, you know I, I don't really want to get rid of my, my 427 yeah so. and I see this as a manual is it still manual electric or uh, no it's actually so that is a mode selection so where I put the, so it was originally a five-speed car, of course. Um, so I removed all the guts of the shifter, and in place of that, I put in, it's basically an assembly with a couple little switches. So if you push that thing forward, it's in the reverse position, middle is neutral, and then rear is drive. So I just wow. wanted to keep the same look and feel of the car, so if anyone looking at it, if I was hiding all the EV, other EV stuff, you wouldn't know it wasn't an EV. Um, it just, just looks like any you know normal uh, DeLorean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then once I start moving, of course you know what's going on. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank appreciate you. it. I'm here with 
Kevin Erickson. Nice. So, Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about your car? What do we have here? Yes, this is my 1972 Plymouth Satellite. Uh, it was an original 318 two-barrel V8 car from the 70s. And uh, my, one of my favorite body styles of all time. And so this is my Tesla swap build. It's a uh, P100 battery with a uh, ludicrous rear drive unit, all mounted in the rear of the entire subframe. So it's basically a Tesla swap. Cool. And so tell us why, why electric? Why did you choose to swap it? it I've always kind of wanted to do the next thing. Um, I built everything from stock vehicles, uh, rebuilding the original carburetors to changing camshafts, heads, modifying the engines, uh, turbocharging the engines, running different fuels, ethanol. Um, I've done compound turbo diesel builds. I've run on veg oil fuel. This was just the next thing. Like, let's go fast and do something new with electrics. So that's how I got there. And was this your first swap that you ever did? It's my first swap, yep. Uh, when I looked at all the swaps going on, which was kind of early when I did this, I thought, if I'm going to do it, it looks like a lot of work, it's going to be expensive, I might as well go all out yeah. instead of having a stair step on the way. And why did you choose this car in particular to swap? So I had the car, um, it actually was going to be a twin turbo Hemi, I had the Hemi, um, but then I saw a Tesla in person take off like I've never seen a car take off, and I thought, I got to get electric torque in this car, and this, and it's big, it's so wide, it's just like a yeah, Tesla, so all the parts fit, the yeah. batteries fit. Everything's actually bolt in um, because I wasn't sure I could make it work. So just in case, I could take it back out. But it, it all bolted in without modifying the car. Really cool. And since this is your first swap, is there any challenge that sticks out to you that you might want to maybe give advice to someone that wants to do the same? And how did you overcome that challenge? Sure, yeah. Um, there's a couple. I would say the biggest is all around the batteries. Um, if you're a car guy, I've always been a car guy. I had the motor mounted in one day. You know, it got shipped in, it was in the car, it's easy, it all fits. The batteries, you have so much more to think about. You have to keep them, you have to package them, you have to make them strong, you have to cool them, you have to heat them, you have to waterproof them, it's TD, wire them. It, the batteries is the biggest effort by far. For sure, and what about any um, special designs that stick out to you the most? Like, what is your biggest accomplishment with this car? Anything you can show us? So I did a, my own custom rear suspension, so we can look in the trunk and see that as a cantilever trunk uh, suspension. But um, I'm just, I made it complete. So it's heater, it's air conditioner, it's battery chilling, it's cruise control, it's uh, remote start with my phone. It's all of the conveniences work like a new Tesla, which is kind of fun. Did you want to go to the trunk? Let's go check it out. Let's go to the trunk. So again, the, um, the build is all bolted. So there's more batteries in the back here. Um, the motor and subframe are underneath and like I said that was easy to build so everything just fit in and that's factory Tesla cradle everything contained and I was very proud of myself wow that was easy this is gonna be a breeze there was no room for springs so my this is my first hurdle which is make a cantilever suspension system so I can well I only had room for these push rods to go down to the original shock mounting points so um, I this is all made out of scrap metal and wheelbarrow bearings and you know I just use things I had and it's been rock solid I haven't touched it since well that's amazing well thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing uh, do you have any future plans yeah I'm uh, about 20% uh, of the way through a DeLorean build now nice. uh, 100 kilowatt hour model 3 build which I'm pretty excited about nice so good luck with that and thank, thank you. you so much so who am I speaking with uh, my name is Karen Salaggio nice and what company do you represent I represent Scorpion EV Scorpion EV, that's awesome. And what do you guys do specifically in the EV industry? Well, in the EV industry, we started up about oh, about two years ago now. And we started by building turnkey fa factory five based Cobras uh -huh. using a Tesla Model S drive line. So we're doing turnkey, that was the original. So it's a Scorpion 600. We have since, since last SEMA, we had three cars at SEMA last year. So last year, a lot of people were asking us, are you doing conversions? And we were just in the lane of turnkey. And we were like, hmm, maybe we can do conversions. So we started looking at it, and we now have a conversion pack. It's called the Venom Kit. So you can literally, you know, everything high voltage mm -hmm. and, and everything about the uh, EV is all in a pack. So you drop it in, it hooks to a T5 transmission. The clutch works. 
and you just can convert your car. We have a dash that goes with it, so it's you know only thing only thing the DIY guy would have to do is work with 12 volt. How how long? What are the specs on that? And how, like how long can you drive? Yeah, the range on it is right at about 200 right now. We've you know this is like beta model two, so we're you know in like most things in the EV world, everything is growing. So we believe it'll sustain about 200. So it's, you know, it's a good daily driver and it puts out about 200 horse e equivalent. Of. Would, so I know it's, you know, this is Shelby's, you know, claim to fame. Yeah, yeah. I've, I love these cars. Yeah, it's a tribute to the 65 Shelby okay. Cobra so back you don't, in the day. So uh, for those who are worried that EV is going to take away that American heritage, mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that? Because th this is a manual, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you know, the interesting part about that, and I've been building and racing these cars, so I'm an internal combustion person. I race Daytona Coupes. I've had three of the regular internal combustion roadsters. So I'm, I'm pretty much an ice person. That's so awesome. you're talking a person who lives in kind of both worlds. What I know is that as things evolve, and even if you were to talk to Carol Shelby, he would say, there's nothing wrong with doing this. Because when you ask him, like there's quotes from him, what was your favorite car? He said the next, the next one, one yeah. right? Uh -huh. The other part of that is he was playing around with EV stuff before everyone else. So if someone wants to go do their homework, they can go see Carol Shelby himself was playing around with EV stuff. I think if he was alive today, he would probably be very much a fan of this. Of course, this is a factory five car. It's not an original Shelby. And I can tell you this, if we were converting originals, that would probably be something that the world could not stand. Yeah, because you know, they have a heritage and, and, and the provenance of those cars. But the guy in this world that owns the most original Cobras, his name is Lynn Park, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Mr. Cobra. Uh -huh. He bought car 002 from us, EV Cobra. So he owns it, he loves it, he drives it every weekend. He just loves wow. it. But it's about having an open mind. Mm -hmm. It's about thinking about the next thing. And it isn't about, I have, I have a 67 GTO at home. I have an AMC AMX 390 four-speed go-pack car. I'm, yeah. I, I'm in both worlds. Yeah, and this, is, I'm, I know people who are ICE mm -hmm. and gas are wanting to stick with manual because you know the thrill, like they like right. the racing. And sure. how how does that work with a gas or sorry with an electric vehicle? Yeah, well, you get the experience of it, and the truth of it is that I mean this Hyper Nine motor doesn't have to have that it can run without it you can make it just straight up but this is so that the diy guy can drop this in it fits the motor mounts that are designed right for this car and you can hook it right up to your existing t5 so they don't have to do a whole drive line replace because when you're trying to work with the diy group which the factory five cars are are built for a diy guy mm -hmm. so if someone wants to convert they want to make it as simple as possible and a lot of people who are in the conversion world that don't do this every day. They're very afraid of it as well noted, playing with high voltage is not necessarily something fun. So if someone else has done it for you, and there's a number of companies doing it and everyone's, you know, how do you get the secret sauce here? But the point is it's safe. It's a whole different experience. And, and I can tell you, I've had both cars, the 600 and this one on track. They are phenomenally fun to drive. It's just different. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. So I'm here with uh, Brandon Dork, Flash Drive Motors. Cool. So Brandon, what do we have here? Tell us about your car. Uh, 71 Volkswagen Bay Window. Um, it has been shortened over four feet in the center section, so we call it short circuit, a little shorty bus. Um, it's got a high voltage Hyper 9 with uh, six Tesla modules in it. Pretty fun little guy. Scoots around nicely. What else do you need? Cool. So I guess my first question would be why EV? Like why did you decide to go electric and why this car oh actually my neighbor james who started our company actually um we've been gas like heads our whole life man like i've owned like 15 different classic cars and he's been mid 50s fords for his whole life and he literally was trying to weed eat his yard and was getting so tired of it and bought an electric weed eater and it worked and we we're like hey, this could work so we did a an 80 subaru brat and we haven't looked back we've we probably converted 15 20 cars in the last year and a half so 
Yeah. And this is, is this fun. one of your first? Or? Oh no, we just did this one a few weeks ago. So it took us a few days to convert this one. So we, we've got it down now. Yeah, you've on, got it down packed. On, on, on Volkswagens, yeah. Cool. But I can I can do a Volkswagen in a week probably. So that's impressive. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, we enjoy it. But what about let's say like your first vehicle? Maybe some advice for people who are trying to do the same. What was your biggest challenge and how did you overcome that? Like, do you remember? All right, our first challenge? challenges. Well, something that sticks out. Oh, I, I remember um, um, how important like uh, software and connectivity within BMS, like our battery management systems, because we converted our Subaru Brat the first time and it only went in reverse. Uh, we didn't realize the programming. Um, you actually had to program it to go into the correct direction for you, electronic signal wise. And that uh, was like, oh my goodness. So uh, it's the smallest thing detail wise and wiring is extremely important. But once you get it down, you know, it's pretty quick and easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And what about your biggest accomplishments, maybe on this car that you could show us or just something that you could talk about that you remember? Oh, well, yeah, I'll show you all. So um, our, our favorite thing is we, we love classic cars, right? We, we've had a passion for classic cars our whole life and uh, breathe, breathing new life into them, right? And bring them to the, I guess, this next generation and in, in, in ease of use and, and for it, increasing like the power and the, the sustainability of them is kind of just kind of our lifeblood. And then be able to do that and, and kind of take things and make them feel like this would be a factory option that this would have maybe in 1971 what it would look like and so we like to really do similar um, metal work that would be like what a factory's metal work would look like to where if you bought this car and you you went to a lot and you saw the electric version we would feel it would look something like this and so after all the years of us working on cars, we picked up on all the nuances of what factory panels would look like, and we tried to implement those in our conversions. Cool, very cool. And you said you did 15 conversions about? Uh, oh, at least that in the last year and a half. Yeah. And what was your favorite one? Favorite one so far, uh, 1967 Volvo P1800S. It's a really cool car. We did dual motors. Um, hopefully it'll be at SEMA, we'll see. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. in paint now, so that's out of my hands now. Three months. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.